But let's talk for a minute about Jordan Addison. Now, he is the Belitnikov winner from last year. He uh, plays at Pitt, and he's a big-time stud wide receiver. And I am sure that when Keaton Slovis committed to Pitt, his thought process was, I'm going to get to throw to that guy like every Saturday this fall. It's going to be awesome. And now the deadline to be in the transfer portal was on May 1st, so Sunday. And you had to at least be in the portal by May 1st if you wanted to be eligible to play this fall. And there was no talk of Addison even being in, having the thought process of going through the transfer portal. Like, nobody had said a word. And then you start hearing, eh, he may be going out to Los Angeles. He may, he may be hearing from some people. And then you start getting numbers thrown around, like USC boosters willing to pay him $3 million to come out and play at USC for his last college season. Now, you also get all of the reports about Pat Narduzzi being pissed off about tampering with a guy that's not even in the portal yet, which is technically, in NCAA terms, illegal. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people that are really, really fired up about this, really upset at the idea that a kid might have been tampered with. And I, I got to tell you, it does not bother me that much because I don't think that this is the only instance. What, what surprised me was Pat Narduzzi coming out big time against Lincoln Riley, right? That's what surprised me is you're, you're going to tell me that Pat Narduzzi, or at least people around the program, because I don't think it was Lincoln Riley that reached out. I think it was, you know, third-party guys that reached out. Hey, you know, Jordan, if you wanted to come out to L.A., play at USC, we might be able to make some NIL deals. That's insane. That's insane. The king of the transfer portal. You think think Lincoln didn't didn't make a phone call, didn't try to recruit the kid? You're insane. I think that Lincoln might have called somebody else. You live in a fairy tale land. Even even if it was Lincoln Riley, I don't think that's like uh, a, a weird incident. I think that this happens everywhere. Like, do you kind of feel the same way? So no. Uh, all right. So here's here's my thought process because I have a completely different feeling on this. Okay. Okay. I am I am extremely pro transfer whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, if we're gonna put windows on it and say you need to be in the transfer portal by this time or whatever, that's fine. But that's it. Like. Like, you can transfer to any school. They can't block 67 schools. They can't do any of this shit. So, transfer whenever you like, as long as you're within the rules of the transfer. Okay? I'm okay with that. Okay. Make as much money as you want to make, and the schools and the NCAA can't say boo about it. All right? I wish they could get money from anybody they want. Because they're old enough to smoke weed. They're just not old enough to, 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 to sponsor it. That's bullshit. All right? Yeah, Some of these I guys agree. are old enough to drink a beer, <laughs> but they're not old enough to sponsor it. That's bullshit. A tobacco, that's all bullshit. Okay? All those products aren't good, but I am very much capitalist believe that these kids should be able to make money however the hell they want, and everybody stay out of business. Now, if we're going to have rules, and we're going to have parameters, then by God, I want those fucking rules followed. Okay? And if you're not in the transfer portal, and somebody is offering you money at another school somewhere else, then that school offering that shit needs to get hammered down because this is what happened to all the years of dark money all i wanted were all of these things to be, to be put in yeah, place just out in the because open i was sick of the dark money i was sick of the bag men i want to take all the bag men in the woods and put a bullet in their fucking head okay so it all brought it to life but if we're just going to go back in the dark and allow things to happen in the dark still then what have i told you in the past I'll let you do all of these things in the in the front, but if we catch you cheating, if we catch a bag man dropping a hundred thousand dollars of cash off to somebody extra on top of the things that went along, I want that school to get the death penalty. I want them to not be able to play football for two years. I want that coach fired and never to coach again. Okay, because that's the only way you can entice these coaches and these programs to follow the rules. If you scare the shit out of them. You make the punishment so bad that nobody would ever conceive of breaking the rules. 
nobody. So, so I want all good for the kids, but I want these programs to understand because we're allowing you to go ape shit. If you step out of the line of ape shit, then you are done. So how how do you go about that, right? Like, what do you I, mean, how do you go about that? You start you start filing paper trails. You start you start getting phone records. You start finding information because none of this shit is done in person. Okay, so well, do, do you know how many different on, communications happen between California and Pittsburgh? <laughs> Probably not that. Well, although right. it, with I'm Keaton Slovis, we can find those things. Like with Keaton Slovis being over at Pitt now, I, I would imagine. <laughs> but that's that's the thing that gets me is it was already widely known that he was going to go to Pitt. Uh, Keaton Slovis was going to go to Pitt uh, before he ever entered the transfer portal. So, you know, I'm sure that before he entered the transfer portal, he probably talked to some of the coaches out there to make sure that they had a spot for him and, and whatever else. Like if the kid reaches out, like. Is that considered tampering? Like, is no because kids can do anything they want. It's it's weird. It's a weird Hell, thing. No, no. Like, oh, you're you're under employment, right? You have a contract with your employer, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying for instance, I don't know if you actually have a contract or not, but I used to have a contract with my old employer. No, I, I, I do. I've contract, got two contracts. Okay. <laughs> I, I could go call anybody in the country that I wanted. Now, if another company wanted to hire me. They would have had to negotiate some type of compensation with my company on top of. There would have been a negotiation between the new company that I want to go to work for and the old company. But that new company cannot call me legally. Okay? Gotcha. You see, understand how that works? Okay. The individual always has rights over the organization. Always and forever. It'll never change. It never should change. So, yes. These players can call these other places to see, are you interested in me? And if they say, yes, we're interested, then they then have to bring themselves into the transfer portal at the appropriate time. And then that, then, then the process happens, whatever happens. Now it comes into light and all this stuff happens. But if these schools are going to start enticing kids before they ever hit the transfer portal, then we got a problem. We got a big, big problem. I, I, I think I can agree with where you're coming from. I can, uh, I can definitely get with that. Uh, my, my question is, I don't even know what my question is at this point. I, I, I don't know what has gone on here, right? So I, I, it, I with the NCAA, Lincoln Riley is a is a known, publicly known. We all understand and agree. He cannot deny the fact that he is a liar. Yeah, that's right? definitely true. So we have a so we have a liar who has his entire career taken transfers from other places, but blocked kids from transferring elsewhere. So we also know he's a hypocrite. Okay, so we know two things about him that know that he's probably a really big piece of shit. But he's really handsome and he's good at coaching football. So we kind of let him get away with whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, uh, okay, I can get with that. I can certainly get with that. The issue right now is that we don't know exactly what's happened. And, well, that's and we because don't... Mark Emmert's worthless and the NCAA is completely worthless. And that's they're the other part. They're going to have rules, but they're not going to enforce any of these rules. Yeah, they're not enforcing anything right now. Like, it's, it is that's, really insane. That's a problem. Yes. Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, the the recruiting... We, we all remember the NIL stuff was opened up, but it was not to be used as a recruiting enticement, right? But we all knew that it was yeah, going to be. No way to, I don't know that there's a way to enforce that. Exactly. Like, I'm all for having rules, but rules have to be enforceable. Right. Like it, if, And that's, that's the issue here is if, if you cannot prove that Lincoln Riley or one of these assistant coaches is who reached out to Jordan Addison, then you can't really prove tampering. Like that's that's my issue with the whole thing is how are you planning on going about enforcing this thing unless you have a recorded call or something along those lines? I mean, there's nothing right now against. My question is: Is when did he enter the portal? Uh, it, that's the other question. He I, his name is not officially in the portal yet. We then, we may then, not then, even know then, until tomorrow. Then we absolutely can. Then we absolutely can call Tampa. 
because because he's not in the portal. But we already have evidence and records that he's been communicated with by the other school. Well, but we don't know that it was the school. We, it could be a third party. Like that, that's that's where all of this gets no, really murky. All right, so the hang on, this goes back to just like the boosters and the dark money. No, 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 no. No school has ever paid any of these kids. All right, it's always been a third party, Gary. It's always been a booster. Okay. We're going to have rules. If you speak for the school, then you're a part of the school. Okay? This, okay, okay. I I see where so you're coming some, from. Some lawyer, all right. So that's just throwing around a lot of money at Baton Rouge, okay? Yeah. Injury lawyers. So some personal injury lawyer in Los Angeles says, well, hell, Lincoln, I'll call him. All right? Hey, he probably talked to the high pitch boy. Hey, Lincoln, I'll call him. <laughs> and, and, and I'll do all this, and I'm going to give him all this money. And he's not in the portal yet. Oh. <laughs> you got to wait until you get to the portal to you calling, you nerd. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.